What is up, Win The Day fam, and welcome back to the show. In today's episode, episode 13, I've got something special for you. I'm going to be sharing lessons from the best. So as many of you know, through various projects, I've had the opportunity to interview more than 100 of the world's most accomplished business leaders, cultural icons, and athletes to unlock their secrets to success. But as I'm interviewing all these extraordinary people, I'm not just trying to obtain information for the projects that I've got on the go, I'm trying to obtain information that can help me personally in my journey to success because one day I want to be at their level. So what I'm going to do in this episode, episode 13, and the next episode, episode 14, is share with you 11 of the best lessons that I have learned along this journey. The best thing, they can be applied by anyone irrespective of where you're at in your life right now. The quote for today's episode comes from Think and Grow Rich author Napoleon Hill and says, there is no other road to genius than through voluntary self-effort. There is no other road to genius than through voluntary self-effort. Love that quote. All right, let's get into the lessons for this episode. The very first one is view success as an obligation. View success as an obligation. We know from Napoleon Hill and Andrew Carnegie and all the other fantastic personal development authors that drifting is the primary cause of failure. However, if you view success as an obligation, that is one of the first things that you can do to build a foundation that is going to enable you to create extraordinary success over time. The quote that I wanted to share with you for this lesson comes from property mogul Grant Cardone, who you have probably heard of. And this quote says, one of the greatest turning points in my life occurred when I stopped casually waiting for success and instead started to approach it as a duty, obligation, and responsibility. Isn't that powerful? I mean, we all crave success in one form or another, and why wouldn't we? As we spoke about in episode 10, how to become a financial winner, when you are a success, it gives you happiness, it gives you freedom of choice and the ability to help others. And for a little bit about Grant Cardone's background, if you didn't know, at the age of 15, he was struck with the loss of three of the most significant male mentors in his life. So he, his brother, his father, and his grandfather all passed away in quick succession. So at the age of 15, when Grant was offered drugs in the schoolyard, like many people in that situation, he said yes. And Grant would go on to become a hardcore drug addict and use drugs every single day for the next 10 years. It was only when he was beaten within an inch of his life and refused entry to his own mother's house that he decided to get his life back on track. That was the moment where Grant realized that success for him was a duty, an obligation, and a responsibility if he was to unlock his potential. Today here in 2019, due to the enormous amount of wealth that Grant Cardone has been able to accumulate, he has been able to provide thousands of jobs with his company. He's been able to provide a lot of resources for people. He also hosts the largest business conference on the planet. He's written more than a dozen books and has all these awesome training facilities and other educational resources to help other people unlock their potential like what happened for him. So that's really, really important in your own life to view success as an obligation. And as my good friend John Shin says, don't be too casual about your life or you will become a casualty. Success is your responsibility, no one else's. So that's number one, view success as an obligation. Number two, thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. We know about books like Think and Grow Rich, which has sold more than 120 million copies around the world, how important our thoughts are along the process. But so many people still don't realize that thoughts can become things. The quote that I wanted to share for this lesson is from Bob Proctor, who many of you will remember as the face of the movie The Secret that came out in 2006, and also uh, from being in the 2018 film Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy as well. So Bob Proctor said to me, thoughts become things. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Just as you can think and grow rich, you can think and grow poor. Our thoughts become our beliefs. But why is that so important? That's so important because it's our beliefs that ultimately become our actions. And over time, those actions, good 
or bad become our reality. So that seems pretty easy, right? What we think we become. So if we just focus on having good thoughts, we will have this amazing life. What's the catch? Well, there is a catch. The catch is if you do not keep a clear destination in mind of what you want and you do not have a structure in place of how you're going to win the day, every day, that negative mindset automatically sinks in. They're going to latch onto your hull these negative thoughts like barnacles on a ship. And if you do not take action to remove those barnacles over time, they are going to sink your ship. Over time, that's what manifests in poverty, ill health, and misery. So that's why it is so important to control your thoughts and have a structure for the day. For any big goal, regardless of what that big goal is, you need to see it vividly in your head and allow your mind to unleash its infinite potential and power to make it a reality. So that's number two, thoughts become things. Number three, build a life that gives you energy. Build a life that gives you energy. The quote that I wanted to share for this lesson comes from Rob Deerdeck, who people might know from having more than a dozen TV shows on at any one time around the world. He's still absolutely crushing it. Rob told me, it's creating your entire universe about you being at your best, living with energy every day, and just being happy. That's the ultimate freedom. Isn't that an awesome quote? I actually recently published a video on Instagram, which you can go and check out on my Instagram, where I spoke about the difference between how winners wake up versus the way most people wake up. So most people wake up and the first thing they do is complain about their alarm and they complain about the traffic, they complain about the work they've got to do, etc., etc. But if that same amount of energy that those people use to complain about the circumstances that they didn't have, that's right, literally that exact same amount of energy that they have used to complain if they redirected that exact same amount of energy into creating the circumstances that they wanted, they would be able to enjoy any success and any reality that they want. They would be able to have a life that gives them energy, as Rob said. So Rob Deerdeck is not just a media and business mogul these days, he was actually a former pro skater. So his quote reminds us about the importance of working on on projects that give us energy. If you're watching this on YouTube right now or listening to the podcast, I'm sure you can probably think of a job you had or a business that you worked on or even a relationship you were in that actually stressed you out rather than giving you energy and making you happy. Happiness, freedom, and that ongoing pursuit of our potential is available to everyone who takes the right action. It is not just reserved for a lucky Few. That's really, really important. So one day at a time, remember to build a life that gives you energy. That's point number three. Number four, take purposeful action every single day. We know that thoughts are very, very important, but they need to be reinforced with purposeful action. So the quote I want to share for this lesson comes from Lewis Howes from the School of Greatness, New York Times bestselling author. He said to me, above all else, action every single day. Above all else, action every single day. Action is the key, not intellect. And it's a bit interesting in the school system that we have that we reinforce this stuff around trying to create a whole world of intellectuals and people either categorize themselves as smart or stupid based on their results, their performance on standardized tests. But sometimes people who are too academically gifted, people who are too book smart are actually too good at evaluating risk. And that attribute keeps them in a state of inaction because after all, they can always come up with with at least one reason as to why they shouldn't do something, and as a result, they don't act. Yet the ones who reach the loftiest highs in any single industry you can name are the ones who take that purposeful action every single day. The habit of taking that action means that they fail quickly and repeatedly. As we've learned in past episodes, failure is actually a gift because it means you tried. It is not something to be embarrassed about. Because in these failures, it's the where the seeds of success success are sown, creating a much faster and deeper success trajectory. It certainly pays to do your due diligence, so don't get me wrong, for any new business initiative that you're looking at starting, it's important to get as smart as you can about the problem that you're solving and the solution that you're bringing to market, as well as the industry as a whole. But just remember, if you want to achieve these pretty lofty goals for yourself, you need to take purposeful action. That is the only way 
you can make that happen. But the good news is that taking action is something that is firmly within your court. So remember to shoot for the stars each and every day. So that's number four, take purposeful action every single day. Number five, be competitive. Now, being competitive has copped a bit of a bad rap, but if on the condition that you're not an arrogant dick, being competitive is actually a pretty awesome attribute to have. The quote that I wanted to share here comes from Barbara Corcoran, who many of you know uh, from the US version of the hit show Shark Tank. Barbara told me, if you're not competitive by nature, you don't succeed as a business person. And if you've seen Shark Tank, you'll know how fierce it can be, not just between the contestants who are on there to pitch their ideas, but also among the, the hosts of the show, the sharks, who are there competing against each other. It's called Shark Tank because it's a bloodbath between the contestants and it's a bloodbath between the sharks who are jostling to try and get the best deal for themselves, to get the best deal so they can actually make a deal where they see that value with their contestant. They also partner up, they try and cut the other sharks out. It is a fantastic show. And if you've read Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, you might recall Barbara Corcoran's story, how she started off as a humble waitress at a diner in New Jersey. But while she was in that diner, she dreamed big. She visualized herself as being the queen of New York real estate. Barbara partnered with her boyfriend at the time to create a real estate company. But one day, Barbara, the aspiring property mogul at the time, was confronted with the news that her boyfriend and business partner was leaving her, but not just for anyone. They were Her business partner and boyfriend was leaving her for Barbara's secretary. Being single in romance and in business gave Barbara that rocket fuel to build what would become one of the most renowned real estate companies on the entire planet, which he then went on to sell for 66 million US dollars. Not bad considering the situation that she was in, which would have buried most people who would then go through life with a chip on their shoulder. But as we know from this Win the Day show and from Think and Grow Rich and other lessons from people like Napoleon Hill to never accept temporary failure as permanent defeat. So the big lesson from that one is you have to be competitive to succeed. Don't be an arrogant dick, but be competitive to succeed by being respectful of other people. Create a valuable solution for each people in the party, but remember to never lose your respect. And that trait of being competitive is still something that Barbara uses to success in her personal and professional life today. Number six, reframe adversity. Now, make no mistake, how you respond to adversity when it inevitably strikes is what separates ordinary people from extraordinary achievers because we are all going to face adversity at one stage or another in our life. Often we face adversity every single day. The quote that I wanted to share for this one comes from Sharon Lecter. So Sharon Lecter, many of you might know, was the co-founder and co-author of the Rich Dad brand. The Rich Dad brand published books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. They had uh, games, board games like cash flow, dozens of books in the personal finance industry that have sold tens of millions of copies around the world and been published in more than 40 languages around the world. So the quote that Sharon told me is that adversity is actually a learning opportunity, not failure. Sometimes a door has to close for another one to open. Think about that. So many of us settle for okay because we're afraid that if we take a shot at something better, we might miss out and be worse off than we were at the very start. Yet it's the adversity faced in the process of unleashing our potential that enables us to become resilient, resourceful, and persistent enough to achieve extraordinary things. After being the founder and co-author of the Rich Dad brand and all of its products alongside Robert Kiyosaki, Sharon reached a point where she felt like her vision and her values were no longer aligned with her business partner. So despite that feeling that maybe, you know, she had that gut feeling inside, that intuition that maybe it was time for her to move on. But of course, like anyone in that situation, leaving a, a what had become a household name around the world that was still extremely profitable to move on to something that she had no idea what she was going to do, had those crazy feelings, that full gamut of emotions that anyone experiences when they are stepping into the unknown. However, Sharon realized that she just had to have faith that there would be a next step, even if she didn't know what that was. And that might remind you, like it does for me, of the Martin Luther King quote where he said, Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Faith is taking the first step, 
even when you don't see the whole staircase. Shortly after Sharon Lecter had left the Rich Dad brand and had no idea what she was going to do, she received a phone call from the CEO of the Napoleon Hill Foundation, a wonderful man, Don Green, who invited her to partner with the foundation on a number of projects that would help share Napoleon Hill's timeless principles to help introduce that to younger generations. And that that's work that Sharon absolutely loves and values today and is still doing. She's joining me as we speak right now on the Think and Grow Rich world tour. She's been involved writing books like Think and Grow Rich for Women, Outwitting the Devil, Three Feet from Gold, and a whole heap of other books. But she also got another phone call that changed her life. She received a call from the president's office. And when I say president, I'm talking about, yes, the president who sits in the White House. And the president invited her to appear on the very first ever, the inaugural president's advisory council on financial literacy. Which president, you ask? I know that's the million dollar question with the highly divisive leader that we have in the White House right now. And that president was actually George W. Bush. So Sharon served under George W. Bush and then continued her tenure under President Obama as well. That never would have happened, that opportunity to be on the president's advisory council or partner with the Napoleon Hill Foundation if she had still been wrapped up in the Rich Dad brand. And that work that she does today is something that she finds much more rewarding than everything else that she's done. So that never would have happened if she didn't trust her gut, channel that adversity into something great and take that leap of faith. So that's our sixth and final lesson for today, reframe adversity. So before we go, I just wanted to quickly do a recap of the six lessons that we spoke about today. Number one, view success as an obligation. Number two, thoughts become things. Number three, build a life that gives you energy. Number four, take purposeful action every single day. Number five, be competitive. And number six, reframe adversity. So all those people who I've mentioned today, they're actually available in Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, which is available right now on ebook, hardcover, and audiobook at bookstores all around the world. You can also log on to Amazon and any other online retailer like Audible and grab a copy. So go and check it out if you want to be inspired and get a bigger blueprint to take ownership of your financial, physical, and mental health. And I look forward to sharing five more lessons from this journey in episode 14 of the Win the Day show. So that's all for episode 13. Remember to get out there and win the day. Until next time, onwards and upwards always.